this is a quiz on ophthalmic anatomy or you can consider it as ospi now what is ospi it is objective structured practical examination you know this new medical curriculum they gain much emphasis upon such modalities of assessment tools one of them is objective structured practical examination ospi so let's begin which test is being done here in this image and which nerve is being assessed So here in this image, what you're seeing that a beam of light is being focused on this eye. And if you're finding constriction in the same eye, that is direct pupillary light reflex. Got it? This, what you're seeing is direct pupillary light reflex. And at the same time, if you find constriction in the opposite eye, then that will be indirect or consensual pupillary light reflex in the opposite eye. Now, in case if it's in, in MCQ format, like you have to select one, the best option. So, you have two options. In, in an MCQ, the answer will be marked pupillary light reflex. Actually, in this image, you can see constriction in both the eyes. A somewhat constriction in the opposite eye as well. But actually, the, the condition for consensual light reflex is... That you have to make a barrier here, a bridge, right? A shade, so that there should no direct light reach to the opposite eye to see the consensual reflex. So the better answer will be pupillary light reflex or direct light reflex. Now the next is which nerve is being assessed. So for this, let me tell you, it's not actually a nerve, it's a reflex arc. The pupillary reflex arc both pupillary, uh, you know, direct reflex arc and indirect reflex arc. Both these two arcs, they made up of, remember, six neurons. The six neurons included in this arc. And the afferent limb of this arc includes four neurons and efferent limb includes two neurons so let me just brief it for you let's say these are two pupils the two eyes and you are focusing torch here so remember in the retina there are first second and third neurons right first neuron is the uh, you know rods and cones the second neurons is the bipolar cells and the third are the ganglionic cells Right. So, it's the axons of the ganglionic cells that come out in the form of op optic nerve. Right. So, third uh, neurons, they are running in the optic tract as well. And if you remember that 90% of the fibers in the optic tract, they relay in the LGB. Right. And that form the, you know, geniculate pathway of visual system. But 10% fibers from the optic tract, they bypass this LGB and they reach directly to this midbrain at the level of superior colliculus. And such, you know, fibers, the 10% fibers, which do not relay in LGB, they form the non-geniculate pathway of the visual system. So, here we consider because, you know, it's the non-geniculate pathway. So, those fibers from the, you know, optic tract, they directly reach to the pretectal nucleus so they are the third neurons and from pre you know i mean let's keep drawing it so that it becomes easy for you so this you see is the pretectal nucleus so and it is the third neuron first and second neurons they're already in the retina the so third neurons when they reach this pretectal nucleus 
now from this pretectal nucleus they are both the sides here at the level of superior colliculus in the midbrain and you find that there is this Edinger Westphal nucleus Edinger Westphal PG nucleus so I am using the blue color for the afferent limb from this you know this pretectal nucleus now this is the fourth neuron which actually relays in both the Edinger Westphal nucleus as well as it also communicates with the commissural band to the opposite pretectal nucleus as well got it so up till here and this you know all it is fourth order neuron this is all i mean you can say this is the fourth order neurons right so then now from this edinger vespal you know this edinger vespal is you know general visceral efferent general visceral efferent type of nucleus so that means the preganglionic fibers uh, will arise here and they will be parasympathetic in nature so from here you know the preganglionic fibers will arise and will relay in the ciliary ganglion from both the sides this is ciliary ganglion of both the sides and these neurons are the fifth neurons of the arc and from there you know this post ganglionic fibers will innervate the constrictor pupillae of the concerned eye or the same of the eye of that same side and these will be you know the sixth neurons and that's how the arc is completed by six neurons four neurons they form the afferent limb and two neurons they form the efferent limb now talking about the errors i mean you know uh, you know lesions so i'm just briefing it short anywhere if you find a lesion anywhere before the pretectal nucleus lesion anywhere before the pretectal nucleus remember before pretectal nucleus lesion in this arc will lead to loss of reflex in both eyes there will be no constriction of pupils in both the eyes if there is a lesion anywhere along you know before the pretectal nucleus <sighs> then then the efferent pathway it depends to which side the lesion is so if there is a lesion either in this one pretectal you know edinger vespal ciliary of coculomotor nerve short ciliary nerves remember these are the short ciliary nerves so that will lead, lead to the uh, loss of pupillary reflex to the side where the lesion is got it and still i would say that for those who haven't stood understood clearly because this was a short uh, description of ospi and if you want to know the details there's a video link attached at the end of this video the entire uh, detailed lecture about this direct and indirect light reflex you can watch that video and understand it better okay